So once again, we're visiting an open sunny habitat to look for fall wildflowers. The key to this pine forest having such diversity is that it's relatively open. So a lot of sunshine is getting down to the forest floor, but also it's management, the way that this habitat is managed. Fire is the key to keeping the understory open here so that plants like wax myrtles and oaks don't grow up and shade out all of these beautiful herbaceous wildflowers and grasses. I'm going to talk about grasses in a future video, but today we're going to look at the different flowers blooming in this habitat. This plant is black senna and in some areas of the habitat it is just absolutely prolific and I think that has to do with how long ago a particular area was burned. Uh, I don't know if you can see all the pollinators flying around but obviously they are loving it. This is another host plant for the buckeye butterfly and I've seen a few small caterpillars around. This plant gets its name black senna because if you dry the leaves they turn completely black. All of the plants in front of me with the white blooms on them are in the genus Eupatorium. Several different species bloom this time of year uh, in this particular habitat. One of them is particularly rare, so it's a really important place for conserving that plant. But one of the things I learned recently about Eupatoriums in general is that this genus of plants supports one of the biggest diversities of moths and butterflies in our area. So this is a great pollinator plant, but also it produces tons of caterpillars and those caterpillars feed birds. So there's lots of really important connections between these species. Goldenrod, which includes plants in the genus Solidago, also turns out to be very important for not only our pollinators, but for those moths and butterflies. So this is a great plant to support a wide variety of biodiversity. It's also the one that this time of year gets blamed for allergies, but typically when you have an insect pollinated plant, the pollen is large because the insect has to be able to pick it up and gather it and carry it on its body to a flower. Uh, so many times what's actually happening is ragweed blooms this time of year also, but it's wind pollinated. So its pollen's very small, and that is the allergy culprit. But since people see these beautiful yellow flowers, they assume that that's what's causing all of the allergy issues. So the last species that I wanna look at today is blazing star. This one happens to be another aster like the goldenrods. Uh, and I think those purple flowers against the yellow uh, just really pop and it's really beautiful. But again, great for pollinators, great for butterflies, moths, all those species that support so much biodiversity. But anyway, there's just so much happening right now that I think I'm probably gonna have to come back and do a part two. So stay tuned.